sitting down with these guys, it's going to be mind-blowing for me. They ain't ready for this! Come on! Men that shaped my life. What Mike Singletary had done for me in 1985 and what the Lawrence Taylor done for me the rest of my life was just absolutely incredible. Oh. Hit by single. What an unload by Taylor. John, I got to do this. Studying the history of Harry Carson and Willie Lanier. The ball's up for grabs. Carson's got it. I don't believe it. I can't wait to grab this knowledge. Let's go! I'm here to find out how do you become great? What the hell is the greatness? What is the substance to greatness? Welcome. I am sitting here with legends, greatness, everywhere, all around the table. Not just in sports, but as men, period. That's what I'm saying right now. <laughs> I'm sitting next to Ray Lewis. You better cut that out. I'm sitting next to Willie Lanier. And of course, I'm sitting next to Mike Singletary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting across from Lawrence Taylor. Yeah, right across. <laughs> how does that happen? Like, how does that happen, Willie? Like, take us back to when you when you was doing it then, what was the mentality of a linebacker then? Ray, it's hard to imagine going back 51 years and think about what the NFL did not have. And that was middle linebackers who looked like any of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lawrence was the outside, the four of us were middle. They didn't have any. I'm the first one. So then with that being the reality, there could have been opportunities for others, but they just weren't given the opportunity. Mm. I was a down defensive lineman when I was in college, so I made the transition from down defensive lineman to linebacker, not just linebacker, but middle linebacker when I was drafted to play with the Giants. I grew to understand, and it was conveyed to me, that the middle linebacker position is a thinking man's position. So you have to have the brains. You gotta have the strength and all of that stuff to play the game but it was reserved primarily for white guys. Mm -hmm. Just like the center position, the quarterback position, the Mike linebacker, that's a thinking man's position. So I knew early on that I was going to be challenged and proving that we were smart enough mm -hmm. to play the position. Physically, yeah, we could play, but were we smart enough to play the position? Wow. When I first started playing the position in middle school, I started studying on the position. I looked at all the linebackers, Leroy Jordan, Dick Buckus, Ray Nisky, this gentleman here. I saw him, and he was the only one, the only African-American middle linebacker. That's the number I'm going to wear. So I wore 63. I wore it in high school, wore it in middle school, I wore it at Baylor, but I was going to wear it in the NFL. They said, no, you can be a lineman. So we had a fight about that. But I had to change my number, but that's why I wore the number 63. Wow. It was because of Will Lanier. I tell you, I came into the league and I think uh, we started to see the change immediately. As an outside linebacker, outside linebacker's a little bit easier mm -hmm. then, because I played the, the middle linebacker position for the year that you got hurt mm -hmm. and you know, got <laughs> and, and, and you played very well. Yeah, but I tell you what, that's a <laughs> you, tough that You really is. embraced him on that. Oh, that good, so. hey. <laughs> the year he, hey, he took off, all right? <laughs> It's a very tough position. Outside linebacker, I love the freedom you have, you know, and, and I was very fortunate that I had a coach, you know, Bill Parcells, that recognized my talent. He was and smart enough to recognize he, your he talent. He was smart enough. <laughs> now, he used to get on me every day. Some of these guys got to get their head out of their ass around here. I tell me, I don't care if you trade me, cut me, put somebody else in here, but you got to get the hell off my back. And Parcells, from that point on, he just let me do my thing to play. Sometimes players. it was <laughs> the wrong thing that he did, but he had people who backed him uh, up. Oh, hey, 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 yeah, you believe As long as it worked. <laughs> listen, no, <laughs> listen, I don't know if I'm going in, if I'm going out, because I don't, I know what everybody on the team is doing, except for me. I don't know where I'm supposed to be, <laughs> because I make it up as I go. He did. And Harry would tell me, he said, listen, hey, just go. Let's go ahead and do your thing. Hey, listen, hey, listen. We got you I'm back. I'm right behind you. We got you, you back. Know, it was made it a, a very good position to play. But he didn't screw up a whole lot. No. Right. I yeah. mean, he might have missed a tackle or something from a, an elusive running back. You know, he had when a... did I miss it? Well, you, you... No, you, you were good. <laughs> you were good. It's so funny, right, that this conversation exists right now, right, because where we are in life, 
And where I was in 1985, like, I was this poor kid with nothing. And there was a blur came across my TV one day, and I saw the essence of Mike Singletary play football. And it forever changed my life. We're gonna be here all day, baby! I like this guy party! What do you think of the biggest change in the game is today? Oh, there's so many changes. I mean, they treat a quarterback now. It's, mm. I think it's, 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 it's smart, but it's hard, man. When you come in full speed and, and, you, and you reckless and abandoned. What I had to think through was how can I play the game and be healthy on Monday? Because if you had been told that you collapsed and you were out for two hours. I, I you, understand it, it, your it, point. It, it changes, it changes I understand how you point. do it. I understand your point. But you can still point. do it. Hey, you got knocked out early. I understand that. In the early part of my career, I'm like Superman. I just, listen, I'm, I'm going through everything, right. you know? And it wasn't until, you know, later on in my career when, when, when you when started. When he got older. When I got mm -hmm. old, yeah, time makes cowards yeah. of us all. <laughs> <laughs> but the guys who are playing now, I don't know if they could have played during our era, especially in the 70s and 80s. I don't know if they could have played the same game. I mean, yeah, I mean, they could have been taught to do certain things, but when I got dressed to go out on the field, I tried to wear every pad that I could wear. Because I, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So when you're out there, you throwing your body around, Bill Parcells used to say, I like black guys from the South because they got big asses, and that's where their power is. And that's wow. true. Wow. Where your power he is. He must have loved you. He, he loved you. <laughs> <laughs> Man, what are we doing on third down? That's all I'm saying. Something happened in my career. There was something that I never forget it. We was playing the Jets, and I lost my temper. I lost it because I was really mad that this guy made this call, and I lost it. Tell them what you told me on the sideline that day. First of all, I got, I got to tell you the true story. <laughs> Before I started coaching, I'm like, who is this young dude? Who is this guy talking all the time, talking all this smack? Get off the field! Get off the field! You can't hurt this! I'm a machine, junk! It's a man's game, boy! And here I am, I'm coaching in Baltimore. And it's my first day coaching. He comes out, after Brian Billick had put the ball on the one yard line and he starts chirping, he starts talking, everybody comes alive. And I'm standing back there with tears streaming down my face and I'm saying, this is what it is. This is what you miss about the game. This guy, this energy, force coming at you all the time. Uh, so I said, wait, hey, look, we can't do that. You cannot do that. He's the coordinator, you're the player, and you're the leader. So if you're going off on the sideline, what, what are they gonna do? How are they gonna affect him? If you don't like it, let's talk about it later. Call it, call what he called, and let's play ball. We give you a call out there, right? Gotta you gotta look at say, that's gonna work. Right, I'm with you, okay? I'm with you. I, I, I have to say for Lawrence, Lawrence to me, when, when I saw Lawrence play, I, I didn't like Lawrence. <laughs> Because um, this joke would just intimidate people, man. Hey, Sula, you better hope I never get back in there. I will kick your ass. Look at that offensive line. Don't be scared of him. Let's go. <laughs> but that joker, when he stood up and you saw him lean like that. Oh, boy. Oh, oh boy. Oh, man. Oh. That was one of the most beautiful things oh. that I've seen. John, I got to do that in this. It's as if each individual's DNA fit what they did. What Lawrence did, I wouldn't do. Absolutely. It didn't fit me. What we did fit us, what you did fit you. Absolutely, like your dance. I mean, I try it every time. I get it wrong, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get it right, man. <laughs> I just keep the right side, just only the right side go. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me just say, I feel really blessed to have had the opportunity to play with this guy. Mm. Because when they were looking to draft someone, was that 1981? Lawrence Taylor, linebacker, North Carolina. I'm like, no, we need offense. We had a good a linebacking core, and they chose Lawrence. And we're like, okay, what is he going to do? 
Oh boy. <laughs> that first practice, you know, we, we saw the, you know, you sized him up. Oh, yeah. Saw the little legs and everything. His legs ain't no different than mine. But when you put him in for practice, this guy would be making it up like a ballerina. And what you saw, it, it wasn't scripted. I mean, it was just stuff that you had never seen before. The moves that he would make and how smoothly he beat the opponent. And we were like, damn, this guy's good. This guy went from like third team to first team just like that. Mm. No, it took it. No, it took a long time. No, it didn't take. It long. took almost twenty minutes. About. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Being able to play with him, it just raised the level of competitiveness in yeah. everybody. He made everybody better. Yeah. But in terms of you, you're like all of us. You fit in very well. I mean, you you span generations. You're one of those guys that guys rally around just because of your enthusiasm and your zest and love of the game. One man! One man! One man! One man! One man! One spirit! One spirit! Go in your careers for a minute. I need one thing, one play, one moment that you'll never forget. New York Jets, 1969. The Jets that played in the prize Super Bowl is first and goal at the one. The game is very low scoring. It's going to change on that moment. So what I do is when the offensive linemen are down, Namath calls out the first count. If he doesn't go on one, I'm moving on two. I'm moving a step in between the guard and center. They still down. I disrupt. They lifted the whole thing. We were able to hold it. They got three. Next possession, we get seven. 13-6, game's over. And that's what got us to this ring. Wow. That moment. Wow. The moment that meant the most to me, Mike Singletary and his teammates created it. Because the Giants played the Bears oh, yeah. in 1985, and we lost 21-0. Mm -hmm. And I remember being in that locker room, and we were all disappointed. And we thought that we could beat them, but they were better than us. It was a pain that we all felt. Mm so that when we started the 1986 season, it was an altogether different team. Nobody cared who got the credit as long as the job got done. That was the catalyst for the Giants winning Super Bowl 21. The rest of your life, the rest of your life, man, nobody could ever tell you that you couldn't do it because you did it. After I retired, Harry and myself, we, we we had a little disagreement and we we fell out of friendship, and um, we didn't really talk. But when I was inducted into the Hall of Fame, oh, I'll tell you what, we've never had this conversation. I was never critical. <laughs> of him. It was, he perceived that, you know, we had something. I love this man. You know, everybody calls him LT. I call him Lawrence Taylor. I know the man, Lawrence Taylor. And that's why whatever went down between us, you know, that was, that was LT. Lawrence Taylor? No. Uh, hey, We've always been good. I didn't invite him. No, you didn't. But he, he came in a way. I came. He was there. That's right. I'll tell you what, best yeah. football friend you could ever have. Mm. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and you and know. And he can play a little bit, too. <laughs> he can play a little bit. Lion of uh, Lions. Wow. This has Wait. been incredible. Is in the end zone, they got him! And it's all over! Oh, what a play! And it's going here like a bunch of crazy dogs! There's something that, that each one of us had. If, if the next generation was looking for that, what would we tell them this one core thing this group had that you can have? To be inquisitive beyond comprehension. Mm. To try to reach for more than you can ever imagine you had mm. and try to expand the way in 50 years that they can be sitting here having discussion. I think it's all about having a passion for, for doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I enjoy playing 
with this guy and all the other guys who I play with. And, you know, that was one of my reasons for playing. Not that I loved the game so much, but the guys who I, I played with, they just elevated me. But also, when I look at you guys as black men who played a position that was reserved for non-black players. But now we've sort of set the bar for many of those who are playing the game now, and they're playing the game because we played the game, and they want to follow in our footsteps. For me, when, when I think of players today, what would I tell them? You know, I thought I was a great player when I played. I really thought I was good. Move down! Move down! Until some of the guys that played in front of me started retiring. And all of a sudden, so I'm looking around That's and I'm so thinking, mm -hmm. I'm not better than this. <laughs> what, what's going on here? And I realize, if I don't have these guys, my goodness, right. somebody to play for, right. somebody to go out there and express your appreciation right. for the game. Right. Don't ever forget, those guys in, in that room, that's why you play. That's, that's why you play. Yeah, you play, but you, hey, they're looking for a leader. Yeah. Yes. And they're yes. looking for a leader, and you got to relish the chance to lead. I mean, I like leading. Mike, let me, let me tell you something. When you say, <laughs> I look into the eyes of those guys, mm -hmm. when it's a first and goal on the five, and you got to keep people out. My goodness. And you're looking into the eyes mm. of those guys around you, and you know that they are on board. Mm. It's a powerful thing. That's a powerful it's thing. It's a powerful thing it's because when you're it's all in, when you're all in in sync, and you know we're in the Super Bowl and and Elway's threatening to score, and we're looking at each other, and we're like, no, it ain't gonna happen today. Who's playing now that can carry on the legacy that we've spoken about? The name that jumps out at me is um, Von Miller, hmm. uh, even though he's an outside backer. He plays with a reckless abandonment that I really appreciate. He's consistent. And to me, that's the mark of a great linebacker. Well, I paid a lot of attention to Khalil Mack. You could see how he, as an edge rusher, were able to do the things, mm -hmm. get under the arm and position of the offensive person, create the issue in the pocket. And it was just kind of interesting in seeing uh, that utilization of skill and a team willing to do what they had to do to get him because it can make such a difference, and it did, because mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. got them to a playoff when they had not been, mm -hmm. and all of that was mm -hmm. a part of what happened in Chicago. You know, I, I'm gonna have to echo Cleo Mack, too, because I tell you what, he gets out of position at times. He'll come inside when he should be outside, he got whip contained and stuff, but when he goes through, he goes through with a force, and he's always up in the quarterback face. He's big, he's strong, he's a little cocky. He has the game, he can make it happen. I have to say, I played with the best, man. How can you how can you compare? <laughs> how can you compare today Come player? On, Belichick. No, no, no. I had a front row seat, man. Right. I played with the best. Right. I can't put anybody on this guy's level. And same can be said about him. Willie, I can't put anybody on his level. There are no players like a Mike Singletary. Nobody can be another Ray Lewis. Where I'm raised at, I'm like, I'm in the middle. I'm directly in the middle of old school and new school, right? And because of what I've seen from old school, man, I look for that one dominant force every time I watch sports. And I have not found another LT. Mm. I ain't found another Mike Singletary. I'm gonna lean on this last question with you because I want somebody to know what it feels like to be a LT or Mike Singletary with a Lanier Harris. I want those kids to dream again on how hard it takes to be that man. A lot of people think they can come do it through talent. Now you guys have me sitting next to royalty, and I know what it looked like. Oh yeah. I watched the legends. I watched the legends, and that's why I want the game. I want this moment to be remembered forever for this one reason. You want to learn how to play the game of linebacker? Go back and study Harry Carson. Go back and study Willie Lanier. Go back and study the intensity of Mike Singletary. And go back and study, I just don't care about nobody mentality LT. That's what we're looking for. So listen, today was absolutely amazing. I thank you guys. 
100th year anniversary of the National Football League, but more importantly, this needs to happen without cameras. So I'm honored to be sitting amongst greats who turned every bit of pain you overcame it, you overcame it. Y'all paved the way. And now, somebody else has to come behind us and pave the way. I thank you, men, for who you are. This is wonderful. <laughs>